the truth of the matter is that I'm devastated by what's going on in the Holy Land. Ask my dad, he knows. I've been developing a play with my dad. I have the word faith tattooed on my arm. <laughs> and what's going on is not. has nothing to do with faith. God damn Joe Biden. God damn Bibi Netanyahu. I wish I was acting. I said to my parents when the pandemic happened, after I was targeted politically at Gettysburg College, and then I was targeted again at Johns Hopkins Center for Talented Youth. I don't care whether people believe me anymore because everybody knows the truth. <laughs> Trump paved the way for all of this. That fucking criminal sitting in court digging up people's tweets and potential jurors are apologizing for their criticism of Trump in so-called democratic Manhattan. Fuck Richie Torres. I was a well known reporter on the gay male scene in New York City. Then I went back to school. I said to my parents, I've spent my entire life educating myself and I have nothing material to show for it. I live on the benevolence of my family and friends. I don't pay for my health care. I don't pay for my yoga. I don't pay for my apartment floor through in Philly. I don't pay for my utilities here. The fuck? How the fuck did Shafiq become the president? Of, is this a fucking joke? How the fuck did Shafiq become the president? This is what I'm saying. Am I being pranked by Columbia University? How the fuck did Shafiq become the president? A banker? I'm shocked. I know Columbia inside out. I'm a student of Mahmoud Mamdani's. Thank you, Amy Goodman at Democracy Now! People are lying left and right on Fox News. Fuck that stupid ass kid and that stupid ass anchor on Fox News today that I saw. A pox on their houses. Something is rotten in Denmark. And that fucking idiot both of them. This is why I will vomit on HBO. Vomit on HBO. I'm the tastemaker. I'm the influencer who trained me. Ingrid fucking Sishi. If you don't know who Ingrid fucking see she is too bad because she's a Jewish South African legend who escaped from apartheid 
South Africa, just like my darling Ashley Dawson did. Don't tell me what fucking apartheid is or apartheid. I was a Columbia affiliate once. Sadia Hartman and Gayatri Chakravorty Spivak taught me. Reflections on exile. Why the fuck do you think Edward Zaid became a legend speaking about legends? Because he and his family were exiled forcibly during the formation of the terrorist state of Israel. Come and take me out, people. Seriously, take me out. I live in Glendale, California, which among other things has apologized for being, I'm a celebrity in Glendale, yo. Armenia raised me. I know Orhan Pamuk. I visited Kars, Turkey, where the novel Snow is set. Do you know that Japanese has three, no, four writing systems? Do you know how fucking smart Japanese people are? Right? Some of us haven't lost our minds, right? Some of us remember facts. Some of us wrote monographs about structural racism, the links between interpersonal violence. Kirby Dick can go fucking cut off his dick. I was like, let me just go back. I'm seeing the ball so huge. Let me just go back and look at the original documents. We have, this is what's going on, people, right? HBO, talk about blood libel. For all the talk of anti-Semitism, I haven't heard a single goddamn Jewish groups stand up for Woody Allen. Where's the fucking ADL been? On Woody Allen, right? Mia Farrow supported Roman Polanski immediately after he was charged with rape. Where do you think she got the idea from? We have journalists. I was a journalist. Why do you think I stopped being a journalist? Because I wanted to become more educated. We've got that fucking independent investigator telling the fucking Daily Beast that stupid piece of shit. Where's Tina Brown on this? Right? Because Tina Brown was part of the dumbing down of America. She dumbed down the New Yorker, and then she handed it off to David Remnick, right, who platformed Ronan Farrow, who is in fact a Nepo baby, just like Zoja Mamet is a Nepo baby and was the weakest link in girls. And I know fucking Lena Dunham, right? Charlie and I are friends, right? People are so deluded. It's sad, right? We had apartheid in this country, people. It was called Jim Crow segregation. You know what's worse than Israeli apartheid, South African apartheid, and American apartheid? Chattel slavery. Right? People have done gone lost their minds, yo. <laughs> this is why they made me in Hollywood. I mean, USC is not letting its valedictorian speak that Trump's connected to Roy 
Cohn. So how come Tony Kushner is accepting this award for Pan America? Right? Listen to Generation Z, my friends. Jewish students of all backgrounds are saying enough. There is no city upon the hill. It's a joke. All religions have been used to harm people. So religion doesn't give you cover, number one. Number two, this is what's blowing my mind right now, that, that right, stenographers, Maggie Haberman, Netanyahu is leading arguably the most extremist government in Israeli history precisely because of the global solidarity movement that grows by the day every time these fucking idiots. I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe Harvard could hire Claudine Gay, right? I mean, that would seem like reparations. I mean, not this fucking comforter Shafiq, who is head of the London School of Economics when they were doing their successful BDS campaign, which we were influenced by heavily at the Graduate Center. This is not my first time on the rodeo. You see? This is called community, people. The People's University for Palestine, that's called community. And I just want to end here because I'm really seeing the ball so huge, as I said. And I'm about to start a job next week in Pasadena, right down the street from Caltech. I own this town. Okay. Let me talk to you about trauma. Let me talk to you about expertise, right? Journalists like the lead investigator for that enormous piece of propaganda called Alan V. Farrow are not trained psychologists. So how the fuck can she be a credible analyst of the work of the Yale New Haven Hospital team? Right? I mean, yo, people, yo. I mean, we have a reading problem in this country, right? The lead investigator, yeah, I'm going there because this is also the piece that I'm writing. This is the frame for my book, right? It's called Pay to Play. My friends, you can buy anything you want, right? That's the name of the game. That's how it works in Hollywood. I don't pay for drinks when I go out, right? I pay tributes. Right? Unfortunately, the only space anymore in the fucking Union States of America. Yes, this is my Gettysburg Address Part 2. Thank you. Let me just reel it in, Arthur. Let me, I know, I'm getting that tone in my voice, baby. Thank you, Jeremy O'Hara. I see you. Thank you, Matt Schneier, baby. I see you. This is my play Nueve. Entiendo Espanol, motherfuckers. Okay, hi, Ava and Ryan. I mean, the smartest people are in Hollywood, right? That's why the Australians <laughs> are here. They're the smartest people in Hollywood. Hey, Nick. Hey, Kate, thank you. So I was saying the only place to do this kind of work, to be able to say anything anymore in this fascist creeping country is on Broadway. Thank you, Broadway. Thank you, right? I mean, listen, you want to hear my first exhibit 
in Identity Politics 101, my friends, maybe that'll be the name of my piece that I'm finishing, my spec piece, if you will. Uh, it's going to be called Hamilton, right? Hamilton, right? Hamilton and the white horse it ran on. Fuck you, public theater, right? Fuck you, Susan Laurie Parks, right? This is the problem, right? There is no critique in Hollywood, you have to like everything. But look what liking everything has wrought, my friends. Right? I said in an earlier tape, I'm exhausted. I am because people who haven't experienced trauma, apparently, or who have forgotten what trauma is, or who have not experienced, thank you, complex PTSD, there's two nicks in my life. Transatlantic specialist and a trans-Pacific specialist. Let me just end here. There is so much doxing going on there is so much injury to people's professional trajectories, as I myself know, that I hesitate to call out a Harvard student, and I don't even remember their name because they're useless to me, but they wrote a dissenting opinion piece in the Crimson saying that they were glad the Harvard administration followed their rules in suspending the Harvard Palestine Solidarity Committee on bogus charges, which are what rules are for to defend corrupt. This is what they this was the playbook at Gettysburg College, the former general counsel of Harvard became the president of Gettysburg College, which is not just sandwiched L-shape wise, if you will, into the Gettysburg battlefield where more than 600,000 people died in the bloodiest war battle on this planet. But Gettysburg College dot 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 I'm connecting the dots is also in Eisenhower country. The 1950s, however, thank you, Todd Haynes. The 1950s, thank you, James Baldwin. The 1950s, however, is not far enough in the past for these motherfuckers. And let me just get to release Stefanik. She was George Santos's. benefactor. <laughs> I don't, this is what I, I, I don't understand. When does this end? When does this end? Does anybody know, can anybody answer this question for me? When does this end? Things have become so twisted, right? That's the problem with Hamilton. Call it cosplay all you want, but the founding fathers and their families are no superheroes. Jonathan Haidt sucking Thomas Jefferson's dick. Speaking of which, I said that to my dad last night because we had words. My parents are so generous. They are Kennedys, after all, and um, taught me everything I know. And they've given me a lot of money over the years, including clearing my $50,000 in student loan debt to the government, because unlike some of these, uh, what, what did Lydia Paul Green say? Right, bad faith actors in Congress, unlike these morons who couldn't tell an apple from an orange,
I've been to Eden. It's where I live. But I digress. A gurgle in my throat. Dot, 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 keeping it moving. Thank you, Dadland, one of my other daddies. It's a 10. Say his name, Dadland May. He was attacked rhetorically on the English PhD program student listserv at the CUNY Graduate Center by a mob of white, straight women. Even though Dadlin had come to the United States from Jamaica as a refugee because he was persecuted for being gay. That gang of women didn't care about nuance. They didn't know the first thing about intersectionality, right? That's why I was going to say, I want to thank everybody who challenged me, right? Because it made me dig deeper. My dad helped enormously by doing our genealogical research. My mother is the hostess with the mostess, as always. And my father and I did have words. It's like I've had words with my mom. And Jonathan Haidt is correct about that. We do need to engage each other vigorously. We do need to debate. We do need to raise our voices sometimes. It's only, quote, human. And here's the thing. Gaza's never coming back from this. The West Bank is never coming back from this. It's done. The Holy Land is a graveyard, just like Gettysburg, Pennsylvania is a graveyard and neither Gettysburg nor Israel should be able to exist. They should be exhibits of what not to do in this world. I saw Kamala Harris making all nice and pretty with Rishi Sunak. Again, Biden and Kamala are supposed to be to the left. So why are they making kissy face and holding hands with The extreme right wing in these countries. Hey, Mariam Burguti, be safe, girl. You know, people are risking their lives to help Palestinians in any way they can. We are all Palestinians. Palestinians were there before Jewish People were there at least twice over. And so I always ask again as I continue to develop this piece, how would you like it if one day in your lily white village, a bunch of aliens started coming in, let alone Lily White, let's scratch. See, kids, you can admit 
when you need a little editing. Let's, let's step back. Imagine you and your family and loved ones live in a place. This is the kind of bedtime story I wouldn't tell my child. Fuck James Wan. Fuck Saw. Fuck horror as a so-called genre. Thank you, Beyonce, for once again showing the way. Do you hear the lyric? An American Requiem that goes, genre? What's fucking genre? I paraphrase. Thank you, Bruce Robbins. I know everybody at these protests. Hey, Nardine. Looking fantastic. Yo, within our lifetime, fantastic work. Thank you, revolutionary student coordinating committee. Thank you, Barbara Foley. Thank you, Rutgers, Newark. I have always said, and I recognize I'm going to leave everybody hanging there. Just think about it, though, friends. Imagine you, right, have been living in a place called Earth your entire life. All you know is Earth. Right? You don't know anything else. And all of a sudden, aliens from outer space start to show up one by one by one by one. And then all of a sudden, right? The World Bank. Thank you, Ashley. Both of you. The International Monetary Fund. The United Nations, right? All of the international legal bodies that were developed precisely to prevent exactly what has just happened in the Holy Land, right? Netanyahu should be behind bars, just like Trump should be. These are the criminals. Right? They should all be behind bars. They should all be thrown into the gulag. I'm George Smiley. Thank you, Ava. My mouth is so big, too. <laughs> I can stick my whole hand in it, except I just got home and haven't washed my hands. I'm a New Yorker my friends. I haven't been sick since the flu vaccine I got in December 29 because I was working at Gettysburg College and didn't want to get the flu, even though I hadn't gotten the flu in I don't know, 15 years without taking the flu shot because every time I get the flu shot, I get really, really sick. Why? I'm super sensitive, people. Now more than ever. And that's why I always say, I have to give it up, my friends. I know I gotta get out of here. I have to give it up for my intimacy director, the whole master. That's his title, not mine. Um, but boy... Mm. You know, I needed to get a couple extra inches, my friends, and man, did I get a fuck Stephen Colbert. Right. Truthiness. <laughs> How come people can't understand that? If the world turned on the Palestinians the way that humans are always shown to turn on incoming aliens, then the world can turn on any of us. That's the point of the Holocaust. And to that stupid-ass Harvard op-ed writer who said rules should be followed 
critical thinking requires in the first place the ability to understand what a rule is, how the rule has come into place, whether the rule is still warranted, and what the question of rule is in comparison to any other question in the world is called geometry. My friends, this is the proof. Thank you, Gwyneth, and thank you, Jake. The fuck Taffy Broderser Ackner, right? Fucking tries to character assassinate Gwyneth, right? in that fucking stupid ass New York Times piece in 2018. Yo, people, I was focused on finishing my PhD. I study black liberation struggles. A black woman Fox News anchor today criticized George Floyd and the movement that sprung up bigger than ever in the wake of the disaster that was the deliberate Trump response to the COVID-19 pandemic stateside. She criticized I say again, George Floyd and the movement. This is a black woman saying this. No daylight between her and Manu Shafiq at Columbia. No daylight. I'm part of the intelligentsia, motherfuckers. Put Fox News anchors and guests to the polygraph, right? Then we'll see who's telling the truth. I mean, I'm reading in the Daily Beast. I got to get out of here. I'm reading in the Daily Beast, right? That Woody Allen weaponized the media in the wake of Mia Farrow's scurrilous charges. Mia Farrow, who directed Dylan on videotape. Dylan, who repeated the mistake that the wigs that were on styrofoam molds in the attic were dead heads. Why would she repeat that in front of the Yale New Haven clinical team if her mother had already explained to her that those were wigs? Again, I say, this is a reading problem. And Madonna is exactly right. Don't watch TV, my friends. Right now we've got people coming out like Jonathan Haidt, Haidt, whatever the fuck his name is, saying we shouldn't. People are paying him a lot of money to say that parents should not let their kids use these screens until they're 16. You have to read a book. Do you know that my parents wouldn't let me watch television? Right, here's the joke, and I am going to get out of here on this night. I passed 33. Thank you, Eric Lott. Ay, 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 ay. I should be in academia right now. I should be in New York right now at these protests. I can't be there because I have been prevented from obtaining a job so I could develop as an actor and have the confidence to be able to say this. I think I'm just going to call this tape cojones. The clowns truly are warning the show. I mean, I read The Art of the Deal in the 1980s when I was seven. Okay. And I knew The Art of the Deal was bullshit at that age. Right. I was seven in 1985. When did The Art of the Deal come out? 1987? I was nine. Dylan Farrow couldn't tell fucking wig on a mold from a dead head?
she has a mental disorder. A lot of us do. That's what the Yale New Haven team said. And all these years later, not only is that expertise being rejected again, and that's what happened at the court trial for the custody dispute. Why do you think Woody wanted the kid? Watch husbands and wives, my friends. It shows you everything. I said this last year. I will keep saying it. Everybody knows it's true. Dylan Farrow thinks she knows more than Kate Blanchett, Emma Stone, Alec Baldwin. Diane Keaton? What's the end game here, my friends? What's the end game, William Kristoff? Even if it were true and not a convenient way for Mia to finally achieve the stardom and acclaim and legitimacy that she always craved but didn't have because she's a star fucker par excellence, right? She did, in fact, braidwash Rodan and Dylan. Right? I mean, why is Moses always cut out of this? Tam killed herself. <sighs> Again, I ask, where's the AGL on this one? Right? Because that's blood libel, right? Because look at how Dylan's charges have grown over the years. She claimed in that New York Times piece that Woody Allen was a predator who had been touching her inappropriately her entire life, even though the original charge was one. And as Woody said, why would he say this? Right? Remember, I have a PhD, my friends. I'm an acclaimed intellectual in this country. Many people think that I'm the successor to Edward Zaid. In fact, I'm going to teach a course. On Zaid's work. Do it on fucking LinkedIn. Jesus Christ, people. These are idiots. Not only have the charges developed from one charge into them all, not only did Woody Allen point out on 60 Minutes, which has now been called weaponizing. Yo, everybody, Anderson Cooper, did you hear that? Right? 60 Minutes is considered illegitimate now, too. Right? Well, I wonder why that is. Because, of course, the right attacked... 60 Minutes 2. Remember Jan Rather? <laughs> I mean... Ship of Fools, my friends. This could be Ship of Fools Part 2 in addition to Gettysburg Address Part 2. Right? Steven Spielberg should be ashamed of himself. Harvard should be ashamed. Columbia should be ashamed. Columbia is over. Who wants to go to school with gates closed shut and police on the campus? Both visible police and police in plain clothes. Because again, my friends, I'm going to leave on this note. I taught at Rutgers, Newark. It's where I was made the first time. The NYPD sent undercover police to infiltrate student organizations, Muslim student organizations at Rutgers, Newark, among other campuses. Right? God forbid a bunch of white students, because Jewish people are, can be multiracial, but by and large, Jewish people are white. God forbid, I say again, a bunch of white kids should have to pass a police officer on their way to class.
because Bloomberg, right, talk about a white Jewish person. And this is not anti-Semitic. This is called a critical theory through performance enactment of identity politics and the residue of that shit. Where everybody could try on any identity, they want. anybody could say whatever they wanted, right? Because after all, to criticize a Jewish person is anti-Semitic by default, right? To criticize a black person is anti-black by default. To criticize a woman is anti-feminist by default, right? Thank God for trans people, right? He said, the fuck with the binary once and for all. Thank God for a loke. You know, Alok and I know each other. We spoke at the same events back in the day. Why do you think I moved out here? I've been saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. This is how you develop material. This is how you develop your hour. Thank you, Hollywood Improv. Thank you, Dance Space Project. Thank you, Interview Magazine. And thank you, The Kitchen. Thank you, Hollywood. Thank you, Harlem. Thank you, Green Wolf. Thank you, Emmy. Thank you, Toshi. I'm learning Japanese, my friends. Mizu to ocha. Mizu to ocha. Mizu to ocha. Do you know what that means, motherfuckers? You'll pardon me, I just started learning if I'm slightly off. That means water and green tea. Kudasai! Please. <laughs> I'm already bilingual in Espanol. Si. Estoy bilingüe. Y más o menos. Kasi Trilingue <laughs> um, mm. It's lavender Oat milk Latte Starbucks is so lovely Mmm I came out of Green Wolf today, smelled the flowers, noticed the gates. Let me ta, let me tell you. Thank you, Ming Wei. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Space Time Research Collective. Let me tell you. Thank you, Vitz. Thank you, Wiser. Let me tell you, thank you, Ashiel. Thank you, Jackson David Al. I'm not blanking on you, girl. I'm just forgetting your name for a second. Sarah Nuttall, thank you, girl. Let me tell you about roads must fall, my friends. Let me tell you about my world travels. Let me tell you about how they protest in Johannesburg, where they really shut things down. Thank God people called for a walk out today. Nobody should be working. There is a general strike in Ramallah. All of the West Bank, perhaps. I would have to check that fact this weekend. We should all be striking in solidarity with Palestinians everywhere. Because as I said, 
If the world can turn on the Palestinians, it can turn on you too. Who the fuck did I learn that from? Jewish people, Holocaust survivors. Never again means never again, and yet it just happened. The highest rate of war casualties, it may be forever. That's what contemporary warfare can do. Who needs nuclear capability, which Israel has, that terrorist state? an agent of the United States empire in the Middle East. There's no going back, folks. A genocide happened on the Biden-Harris watch. And Trump's going to prison. Who the fuck is there to lead this country out of this mess? There's no one. But I'm good, as I say. I'm George Smiley. I've got friends all over the place. Thank you. Gary Oldman. We'll make this a 4848. Call it a podcast, right, Vanessa? <laughs> I mean, the podcast, right? Remember? During those early days of the pandemic when all those fucking idiots in New York and the literati, right, were saying that uh, there were all of these fireworks going off for this reason and this reason and this reason and this reason and they all turn out to be false. New York City is a police state. at least in comparison to here in LA. Right? Arthur was stopped, but not frisked. And as I meant to say earlier, stop and frisk was a terrorist operation to psychologically harm young people, black people, brown people of color. And I'm an expert on that. So the fuck anybody says to me, it takes an expert to recognize an expert, just like it takes a native person to recognize a native person, right? The brain drain is real, my friends. People are stupid as fuck. None more so than the people leading these Western governments and their institutions and brainwashing everybody. Smoked out and weed, video games, TV, and every other brain-numbing technique there is. You want to live forever? Create your life, my friends, and just keep creating it. That tells your body, oh, this person wants to stay alive. Right? And thank you. That's what I came on here to say. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all my sexy friends at Trappy Hour Harlem. I woke up a wreck today, borderline, but you just, but you keep on pushing my love 
over the borderline, borderline, Coliscola. If that's actually happening in the Lucy Lertel, that's exactly what should be happening right now. Right? We should be defamiliarizing these figures who are said to be unassailable. We should be provincializing them all. Thank you, Deepesh Chakrabarji. And that's what's happened, my friends. Harvard's dumb. Why? Because Boston ain't New York and Cambridge ain't Newark, my friends. <laughs> New York, New York, a city so nice they named it twice. But what about Newark? New York, Newark, New Ark. I'm on a New Ark, people. Arthur said, change your vision, my love. And you too will find inner peace. And all these years later, Trappy Hour Harlem, as I was saying, followed me on Instagram. And today I woke up in a foul mood because I can't sleep. I'm so agitated. You see how I am. Arthur knows how I am. Say his name. You saw how I started this as I tip the ship of fools. I'm navigating through the fog of war, my friends. Don't listen to anybody out there unless I've vetted them. Because I have found inner peace and every day I log on to Instagram and see my beautiful community in there that I curated. I'm reminded that I can do anything. And I don't even have any poppers in me. You saw me walk in. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie Hoffman. It is a great 30 seconds, but then you just keep doing them. <laughs> and thank you, Showtime. Yeah, fuck HBO. Right? Homeland and Billions. Well, like I said, I'm an actor now. I have to keep it civil. I did like girls, but I liked Insecure even better. Ciao for now. The rest, as they say, is history. You can attract Mohammed. Thank you. Tilda Swinton, thank you, Raj. Roy, and thank you, Derek Jarman. Maybe I'll teach a course on Derek Jarman. And thank you, Lena Witty.